we are by far the earliest company here. Um, we are basically three guys sitting in a room coding 24 hours a day um, and building developer tools, which is fun and awesome and tools that we really wish we had when we first started. So the way that we actually got to starting Plaid, um, which is basically a developer platform to aggregate and analyze card link data. Um, so any way that people can spend, we can aggregate that and make it really, really interesting. Um, and the way that we got started was we actually spent six months trying to build card linked applications. So we had a couple small applications that we tried to build that didn't really go anywhere. We built a larger one called Sliver. Um, and that was the goal of that was basically to pull in your entire history of spend and tell you the next place to go. So if we knew everywhere you'd been before, we thought that we could tell you the next best place to spend. So if you go to restaurants all the time, we'll match you with other restaurant people and tell you to go there. The issue though was getting the data and getting the data in a format that we could use it and integrate it and pull it into kind of the, the interface that we wanted to, to look at it in. Um, so there's some kind of card linkage providers out there that exist. Um, a lot of you guys might know Yodely or Intuit and there's kind of some other ones that do it as well. Um, so what they do is pull data in into a format that you can look at it um, and then as a, as a developer you can build some applications. So here, if the clicker works, are a bunch of applications that are built kind of on that platform. So these are all Yodely and Intuit users, um, primarily Yodely users. Um, there's one or two that are testing out Intuit. There are hundreds more um, that I didn't pull onto the slide. But what they do basically is, quick slides, go, yes. Um, so they take statement data. Uh, Yodely goes or someone else goes and screen scrapes statement data, pulls it into a format that's just a big list of transactions and then you serve it up in an application. So you can look at an aggregated set of transactions. You can see all the maybe categories that you spent in and maybe lot items that you spent in. But the big problem is if I look at a statement and I see SBX, I know that means Starbucks, but I am a human. Um, and uh, the applications that sit on top of it generally cannot look at these in a very specific way and kind of in a way that we really needed to understand. So if I go to SBX, I need to know that Starbucks and that I should be actually going to the place next door um, that's a better coffee shop and cheaper and people that actually like it want to go there. Um, so we decided to go build that. Um, so basically what, what we wanted to do was one, aggregate data and that's kind of the table stakes and, and we built an aggregator which is, which is great and we can go pull data from a bunch of data sources but then what we really wanted to do was resolve data and make that something interesting. So we wanted to know merchant name um, which gets us back to ability to build into tastes and likes. Um, we wanted to know categories. So we wanted to know habits and like how people were spending consistently. Um, we wanted to know location. That was really important to us because we wanted to put these on a map. We wanted to be able to target people based on where they're spending. Tell them this is your home address so you, or this is your home area so you should be going to this grocery store that's close to your home. Um, and this is your transaction history. So the problem with existing data sources is that you could look back 30 days, 60 days, maybe 90 days. <laughs> Thanks. Um, 30 days, 60 days, maybe 90 days. We wanted to look back five years. We wanted to understand where you were five years ago. If you go skiing five years ago and you didn't go skiing last year, we still, that's still relevant. You still are a skier. Um, so that's all stuff that we built and uh, based on our resolution engine, we're now getting to like 92, 93, 94% accuracy um, and actually getting back to specific place names based on the way that we've architected our system. Um, so what do you do with it and why do you care? Um, if you're a developer, you can now do check-ins. Um, this is one thing that uh, we're about to launch with Foursquare in a couple weeks. Um, you can turn your card swipe into a check-in. So every time you swipe your card an hour or two later, whenever it posts to your statement, we'll check you into that place. Um, quantified self. So now we can do categorization. We can understand where you've been spending um, and allow people to serve deals to you, to send reminders to you, um, to say, you know, last year you guys actually went out to this big restaurant meal. You might want to remember this. Um, you can do reminders, um, which gets into like reminding yourself not to go spend places or kind of watching your spending patterns. Similarly with notifications, um, I can say if I go to bars four times a week, um, maybe I should donate five dollars to some group that I don't like. Um, so basically ways to, to monitor yourself. And then actually someone's building a dating app on top of our, app, our application. Um, but I guess the, uh, the big question is kind of how it works. Um, so what we do is we say that you can take a single line, um, embed that on your site, and basically we'll populate an onboarding box for you and you can start collecting transactions five minutes later. Um, that's a big change from how it works today. It usually takes about two and a half months to integrate, a few thousand dollars up front, usually above 10,000 up front. Um, and so one of our interns is here. Michael uh, started working with us about a week ago. 
built his first application his first day, um, was up and running in two hours, pulling transaction data, um, and actually created a Foursquare card-linked application um, right then. So that's one of our big focuses is simplicity. Um, and to talk a little bit more about how the backend works, I'm going to let my co-founder, uh, William, and our CTO talk. Yeah, hey, so kind of going on Zach's point, right, we can break the technology down into two things. One is actually the aggregation. So how can we pull the information from banks, credit card statements, anywhere else? It's kind of a tried and true thing. People have already done it before. What we're really focusing on is the actual resolution and categorization. And I'll kind of talk about maybe three strategies, three strategies and how we can do this. The first is just some basic kind of test, tech, uh, text parsing algorithms that we've built in-house. Um, the second one is we actually... As Zach said, we have the ability for the moment a user comes on, we can look two, three, four, five years back. So the amount of transactions we can actually hold is immense for an individual. So that's five, 6,000 transactions. And so automatically, with a couple of users, the base of data we actually have to go to, to start looking at all the similarities between the transactions is quite huge. And the last one is kind of solving that half mile problem, right? Is once we've kind of resolved 75% of the transactions, how to resolve the other 25%. This is where it really kind of gets interesting and helps with the geolocation. Is luckily human beings actually spend in a fairly consistent pattern. People spend kind of close to their home, close to their office, and they kind of start spinning these concentric circles. So automatically we can kind of create a geographic bounding box in terms of where people normally spend. And so we can start to cut down on all the possibility locations we can actually resolve to a very small finite number. And as Zach said, we've been able to get this number up to 90 to 93% for actually place names and categorization. I'm sorry, for 100% for place names and categorization and 90 to 94% for precise geolocation and actually mapping it to a specific factual or Foursquare ID. So for that transaction, we can put more interesting stuff on there, such as like menus, reviews, all sorts of information. So a little bit kind of how you can access it. You can go ahead and email us for a developer key. So all you need is a developer key and a secret. And with one um, RESTful call, you can actually get 30 days worth of information, another one, and you can actually get up to five years of information. Um, so what's most important is we actually score them. So we score on how accurate we actually think we are, amount, um, date, and actually the clean data of the actual transaction itself, and then map back to a specific location, IDs or geolocation. Um, so just kind of some quick stats on so far. Each user generates about 3,700 transactions. That's about $190,000 spent, 1,750 transactions. Um, they're actually unique locations that's mapped to. So as you can see, if there's a couple users, the amount of transactions that we look at is immense, and the applications are, are obviously very awesome. So you can go ahead and email Zach or I, just William at Ply.io or Zach at Ply.io, and we can get you, hopefully, developing some pretty cool applications very quickly. Thank you very much. Again, we'll, we'll ask questions okay. uh, in a second. We'll bring everybody back.